One of the things you really need to be comfortable with as an IS auditor is this concept of IT governance. How are they actually running their IT department, their IS department? Is it really supporting the business objectives? Are they actually managing all of their resources and their assets? Um, not just have things like disaster recovery plans, but how are they just running the whole IT department? So when we take a look here at IT governance, you want to evaluate, is their IT governance effective? And look at it vis-a-vis -vis the whole IT organizational structure, not, not just the company organizational structure, but the whole IT organizational structure, starting with the CIO on down. Evaluate the IT strategy. The IT strategy has got to support the business objective. Evaluate all the standards, policies, procedures. Are we compliant with all of these? Make sure that the organization is compliant. Not just the IT department, but also is the IT department compliant in a way that supports the organization? How about um, their investment and resource allocation and use and um, um, uh, resource practices? Evaluate those. Are they, they being wise about what they acquire in terms of resources, hardware, software, personnel, and how they're using them? Uh, look at how they contract outside labor. Or, or how they insource to other parts of their company. Um, look at their risk management practices and are those in um, line with the overall appetite for risk for the entire business. And then also their performance monitoring and assurance. Look at all of these practices when you're auditing the IT department and looking at their IT governance. So there are several kinds of concepts to governance. First of all, there's the idea of enterprise governance. And this is the best practices and the use of controls to provide assurance that the business um, is uh, on track and that we, what we're doing as an IT department supports the business objectives. And then corporate governance, are we doing what is legally required um, by regulation uh, or socially required? Are we being good corporate citizens as, as a business? Um, and so what is our strategic direction there? And then, of course, there's the IT governance as well. Um, is everything we're doing best practice to ensure that everything IT is supporting the whole business strategy goals and objectives? IT governance has focus areas. You should be aware of these. Strategy. We need to link IT function with business function and enterprise function to meet business objective. Value. Anything we buy, anything we do as an IT department has to have business value. It has to promise some kind of benefit to the enterprise. Resource usage, proper and wise investment in systems, applications, information, personnel. Risk, uh, awareness of risk and risk management so we can apply effective controls and mitigate or minimize risk. And also tracking performance and measuring results. One thing that a lot of uh, companies do, especially the larger ones, they use something called an IT balanced scorecard. And the scorecard is really an IT governance evaluation tool. It, uh, basically, it allows you to track IT functions and processes and um, just basically see the results of what we're doing. How well are we doing? And um, so we can see, uh, is, is anything red right now? Is anything yellow? How much is green? And it can be... Um, Internal data gathering, you can use satisfaction surveys, um, uh, what are our capabilities, um, evaluating our processes. And um, I, you know, I've, I've been at organizations, large organizations, where in the company intranet website, you can see right there on the, the front, the main website page, basically an overall balanced scorecard of the company and the projects. And, what percentage of them are red, what percentage of them are yellow, and which, what percentage of them are on track, are green. And so then, if you're curious, you can click and drill down farther. There are frameworks for IT governance. And so here are some examples. You don't need to memorize these, but you need to know that they exist, and in general, what, what are they for? So we have 
COBIT, which is right now in version 5, put out by ISACA, and we know it's the control objectives for IT, and it's really the business framework for governance and management of the enterprise IT. There's ITIL, I-T-I-L, and that is the Information Technology Infrastructure Library, and the whole idea behind that is this is the, the most widely adopted approach for IT service management. It's really a no-nonsense, step-by-step, this is how we're going to do it. It's a practical framework for um, identifying and planning and delivering and supporting IT service. There's ISO 27001, actually this is the 27000 series, and this is a formal specification for um, uh, management systems so that information security is explicitly under management control and you can then be certified to be ISO 27001 um, compliant. You can be formally audited and uh, certified compliant with that standard. There's also ISO IEC 38500 which is um, principles for directors and that's owners, board members, directors, um, senior executives for when we evaluate and direct and monitor and use IT in our organizations. IT is no longer just a cost center. Its whole thing is to enable the business to deliver value and to uh, make money. And so it is the supporting infrastructure now for the business to do its job. It's not just a cost. If you're kind of wondering how some of these relate, um, I've heard some people say, well, since ISO 38500 is really from the top-down view, the aerial view from the directors, the, the board of directors and the really high-level high folks, that can be viewed like the roof of a house. And then COBIT is, is the walls. And then ITIL, these, these low processes, like the foundation. Again, you don't need to memorize this, but to just kind of see how they relate to each other. Now, um, also in balanced, um, or rather, IT governance frameworks, we have the tool, the balanced scorecard, and I, I've, I've seen really big ones. You know, they're basically spreadsheets, and they have all these sections. Um, uh, we're doing this, 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 and then in this section, this, 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 and then you can see, is it red, is it green, is it yellow? So you can see how much red there is. And like in a whole project, you can see like whole departments across it and, and whole sections, and you can see how much red is on, so we can see, is it on track or not? And there's also something called Six Sigma. Six Sigma is, um, it, it's a method for trying to achieve near perfection. What it is, is it's, it's a very disciplined approach to getting rid of errors in process and getting rid of variability in process. And the process can be business process or even a manufacturing process. But uh, basically, we're trying to standardize, get rid of errors, and get rid of variability, and try, try to come as close to perfection as we can. Here is one example of a balanced scorecard. So we can see here that um, we've got the uh, key goal indicators, the KGI here, and we can see that we are greater than 99% uh, percent a target of assets covered by systematic risk assessment. Um, our, tar or t our target, rather, is to be greater than 99%. Our actual is at 98 so therefore we're not totally green yet. We're still yellow. Or the number of personnel vacancies in security roles. Um, the target is to have nobody. In actuality, there is one vacancy, so therefore the status is yellow. Or the time taken to grant, change, and remove access privilege. Um, we don't want it to be more than two hours. Right now, the actual is 1.5, so we're good. We're, we're on target. Or percentage of agents covered by effective security awareness. Target is 100%. Actually, we're at 99, therefore yellow. Let's skip down here to a red. Number of systems where security requirements are not met. Maximum was two, but when we did our audit, it was five, so we're definitely red. We're, we're not close there. We're, we're like off, quite off. Um, average turnaround time for an incident. Our goal is to uh, have it... Uh, uh, deal with it within two hours, but it's really taking two hours and 25 minutes, so room for improvement. Or number of pending actions to meet response and recovery requirements. Goal is to have no more than five. We're actually at 10, so therefore we're red. So we can see at a glance all of these key goals we have, how close we are to achieving these goals. And it's a very common tool to use, and, and you just set up a spreadsheet, and you list out all of these key goal indicators. And then you have what's the target, what's the actual, and, there, and then a, a visual, usually just the red, green, and yellow, to see the status uh, really quickly at a glance. Another thing we need to look at is 
quality management because businesses are worried about quality um, and they're worried about quality not only of the products they put out but also the quality of their processes. So we're looking at the control methods for quality management. We're looking at the assurance practices. So how do you assure that you are meeting your quality goals? And what improvement techniques do you have? Or you just keep on doing the same old thing. So we want to look at how they manage their quality assurance and quality control. So the quality management system is going to be made up of documents and processes and manuals. We should look at it. Is it effective? Is it efficient? Um, and are there standards that can help us guide management through this whole process? And are they aware of it? There's also going to be a financial management system for developing budgets and forecasting and monitoring and analyzing what we have. And the IT department will have this as well. So we want to look at their financial management system. We want to look at their security, information security management system. Are they doing business impact analysis of uh, core IT functions and applications and services? Do they have business continuity and disaster recovery? And are they managing risk? We want to look at that. We also want to see how they're managing HR from an IS perspective, hiring people, training them in the handbook, um, what's the promotion, what's the general training, uh, how are they scheduling, and how are we reporting um, what time people put, uh, people put in, what are the performance evaluations, do we have required vacations, not only to give people a break, but also to kind of rotate people around and not give them a chance to hide too many um, irregularities. And what's the policy for termination? We need to look at all of this as well. So when we're evaluating the effectiveness of IT governance, we want to look at the goals and objectives of all the types of governance applied to the business, the enterprise, corporate, and information security. We want to verify that the IT governance framework applies to that type of business. We want to ensure that the proper management systems and roles have been assigned and that those roles are doing what they're supposed to do. And that um, we want to see what the control environment is in the organization. Make sure that those controls are applied properly. And verify that the procedures and processes are applied correctly. And assess the achievement of the performance objectives. Are they meeting their objectives um, uh, by the business leaders on all levels of business? So the next thing we're going to talk about then is um, vendor and outsource management.